Hello my friends and welcome to the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Hero Class Rankings List. So how will we decide whether a Hero Class is good or bad, whether it deserves a spot near the top or near the bottom? I propose to use two key criteria. The first criteria is we're going to be asking how often is it the case when you're playing as the town that is aligned with that hero class that you want that hero class to the exclusion of others. So take for example uh, knights, we have Valeska here in the top left corner representing the knights. How often will it be the case that we want a knight to lead our castle forces as opposed to choosing a cleric which is the main competition in the town or choosing a hero from some other faction or from some other class instead? Uh, how, how well does the knight bully the other character classes out of the castle. The second criterion is the shoe on the other foot. So how likely is it that we would choose a knight to lead our forces if we are not playing as the castle, if our main town type is something else like the Inferno or the Dungeon or Fortress or whatever else? So let's bring up the knight list and we'll have a look. Okay, so we've got the knights here on the screen and a quick uh, acknowledgement and shout out to heroes.thelazy.net where uh, there's a central repository for all the data on all the heroes, creatures and everything else in the game. This is an image I've taken from their website or from that website. I'd like to start each analysis by reminding us ourselves what is the primary stat line for this class. So knights operate on a 2 2 one, one, which means 2 attack, 2 defense, 1 spell power and 1 knowledge. That's their starting primary stat list. And I think for a hero of might, that's pretty good. Uh, a balance of attack and defense, obviously not geared at all towards spell casting. When we look through the list here, um, we might just make a quick note to say I am going to operate on the Horn of the Abyss mode. One thing we need to do is exclude just a couple of people on this list, uh, Roland and Sir Mullock towards the bottom here. Catherine as well, we need to exclude for the same reason. The key characteristic that you can see here is leadership uh, for knights and leadership's a great skill it's a really really nice skill but it's a bit of a meme like every single one of them has it um, and there isn't a lot of variety there when we look down through the list of specialities we've got Christian with his ballista and artillery that's a really nice pairing he comes with a free ballista he's yeah, he has special bonuses to make the ballista shoot better and he is a natural talent at artillery Edric is great with griffins. Armor is a solid secondary skill. Archery is an okay thing for Oren, given that we've got marksmen in this town. Um, we have Sorsha and you know Valeska, Tyrus, Cavaliers, um, the creature-based sort of specialities there, as well as a navigation hero in Sylvia. All of these second second skills are pretty good as well, and uh, pr pretty strong. So, how do we apply this test? Well. Let's think about the first primary test. How likely are we to choose a knight while playing as the castle? I think we're pretty likely. It's a really solid it's a really solid class. There's no one really on this list that's terrible. I mean, I don't like Tyrus's Cavaliers speciality. I don't like tier 6 specialities. I don't think they really trigger and matter much. But Tactics is great, so she's solid enough. Estates is great for Lord Hart. Beatrice uh, with Scouting is fine in uh, the Horn of the Abyss expansion, for those of you playing that one. Yeah, I think uh, it's pretty likely you're going to choose a knight uh, to lead your forces and be pretty happy with that in week 1, week 10, week 20 as the castle. We might give them something like 7.5 out of 10 on that score. Um, how likely would you be to choose a knight to lead your forces if you're someone else? That's the second test, right? So if we're the dungeon, I, it would be the main one I'm thinking of. So I think the knight is a really solid, um, solid offering for foreign factions as well. Sorsha, Valeska, Tyrus, uh, I was going to say Catherine, uh, but those three specialities as well as Edric's Griffins won't matter. So we might give them a 7 out of 10 on that second score. Where should Valeska go to represent the Knights? I think we need to actually put, a pretty, put her pretty high on the list as a starting point because not many of the other classes are going to score very highly in both categories. So I think the Knight is somewhere on this podium, this secondary podium. There are a couple of other classes I'm really excited about that are probably going to hog this area. I think she might be somewhere around fifth, right? So we'll say that the Knights are the fifth best class. We will be tweaking and moving and competing and, and rejigging as we go. Next cab off the rank is the Cleric. 
represented by Ingham here, as we can see. Okay, and here we are. Um, with the list, we have the same eight clerics, regardless of whether you're playing Horn of the Abyss or Shadow of Death. Um, and, well, what can we say? I suppose well, let's start with the starters we mean to go on. Let's look at the primary stat list. So for a hero of magic, you typically have five points spread around the four skills. And clerics are one, zero, two, two. So they have one attack, zero defense, and then two spell power and two knowledge. So for a hero of magic, I like two knowledge. Two knowledge is good, and having um, two spell power as a starting point is, 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 is pretty decent. When we think about the castle in particular, the castle gets up to level four. The mage guild can be upgraded to level four, which is a lot better than level three, but not as good as level five, um, where, where most of the towns are sitting. Um, so we're sort of okay on that test. We've got basic wisdom and obviously advanced wisdom for Adelaide uh, as standard, uh, and that will that will that will combine reasonably well uh, with the two spell power and the two knowledge that you get fresh out of the gate. Looking down through the list of individuals, a dealer with bless. She's really good at bless, and um, she has diplomacy. I like to turn diplomacy off in the games I play, but I don't want to hold that against a dealer too much. Adelaide's Frostring, I don't care about Frostring very much, and I, even as Adelaide, I'm probably not casting Frostring all that often. Um, the Advanced Wisdom is kind of a bit of a letdown compared to having a good second skill too, uh, like Intelligence or Estates, as you can see below. Caitlyn is a really solid hero, I think, with Intelligence and Gold. I love having free resources, and I'm going to rank rate these heroes pretty highly, even though maybe they're not as attractive for a primary primary hero but they're very very appealing to have in your army uh, or to have in your uh, well, in, in your forces let's say Cuthbert's weakness and estates goes well um, I actually don't like I uh, don't mind Cuthbert Ingham monks aren't a big deal for me and mysticism isn't a huge deal for me although it is better in Horn of the Abyss than in the basic game uh, I like Loinus a lot with prayer um, prayer's great spell and knowing it's fresh out of the gate is quite solid quite decent Rion's first aid is disappointing uh, it's not a great skill, and Stone Skin is a disappointing start. Sanya is one of the heroes that I'm going to label the trash uh, heroes. There's a, basically a big waste bin where all the Eagle Eye specialists need to be put, sadly, uh, because of the woeful um, utility of Eagle Eye. So right off the bat, we have really only seven out of eight characters that are remotely usable or, or interesting because Sanya is, is beyond, re, you know, reprehensibly bad. Rion is is poor. I, I would say, looking across the list, 1022, my general feeling is one of, okay, I'm okay with this class. I think it's a good class, but I'm not jumping for joy about it. Let's apply the test. How likely am I to choose a cleric in when playing as the castle? I'm moderately likely. I think a knight is better, so I'm going to give them something like a five and a half. I think they'll get bullied off um, by the knight, and they'll be bullied off by other uh, useful hero classes from other factions fairly frequently. How likely am I to pick a cleric as a foreign town? Well, I, I actually think maybe they score pretty well on this front, because there's only one... I mean, if you look at Sanya and Ingham are quite unattractive to a foreign town, but everyone else is actually pretty solid, provided that you have star accesses and wishing wells and stuff around, and you're just like, yeah, I could really use a hero of magic here. The cleric isn't a bad shout, but I think I'll give them a slightly higher score on that second um, test, maybe something around the six and a half. So I think we're definitely below average. Maybe somewhere between 13th and 15th, I think, is where the cleric is going to land, I think. Okay, the next cap off the rank is the Ranger, represented by Ryland here. So, Rangers of the Rampart. I am working my way from Castle down to Cove in the sort of order, classical order of the towns that, that shows up in the menus uh, of the game. So let's start ourselves off by reminding uh, reminding everyone what this stat list looks like for Rangers. It's 1-3-1-1. One, one, one. Okay, one attack, three defense, and then one each for spell power and... Uh, knowledge. So we've pivoted away compared to the knight from attack to defense. Right off the bat that yeah, immediately makes me go eh, right because the rampart doesn't really desperately want more defense than it wants attack I don't think. Um, and I think I prefer 2-2-1-1 for my 
mighty characters. Um, when you look down the list here of things that these heroes want to do, they want to shoot. As you can see here, three of them are really archery focused. Um, and then there's leadership as well. So that's a damage dealing kind of mentality. And I just feel like 1311. Eh. Looking down through the list here, Clancy's very good with unicorns, and his um, resistance is replaced by interference in Horn of the Abyss. I don't love tier 6 specialities, but I do love unicorns. Ivor is awesome with elves, and elves are what the Rampart is really all about. Uh, check out my creature tier list for more if you want to hear me waxing on for like 20 minutes about how great elves are. He's also got offense, which is a strange combo, but um, Ivor feels great, you know, especially when you are the Rampart. Genova, we have a gold hero. In Kaya, we have a logistics hero, logistics being the greatest skill in the vanilla game and still a very solid skill in Horn of the Abyss as well. Mephala has armorer, leadership. We've got Ryland with uh, leadership, diplomacy, again, won't hold it against him. Don't love the dendroid speciality, really. Thorgrim, I think, shows up. I don't know, maybe he does show up with resistance still in the Horn of the Abyss, the way it's written here. I don't love resistance. It's a solid skill, but I don't... In the early game, especially when you're fighting the environment, it doesn't do anything. Okay. You Fretin, not very good. We're going to skip Gelu because he won't show up in random maps. And then Gis Giselle is added in the Horn of the Abyss. I, I think that's an impressive list of specialities and skills. Okay, All of these skills are right up there with the kind of skills that you're going to want to choose. You, you want offense, you want logistics. Leadership works really well with Rampart. Archery is meh. But not when you're fighting with elves. Archery, if you, you, you can go ahead and build around elves and have archery and be quite happy. How likely are we? Let's apply the test. Test number one. How likely are we to, to want to buy a ranger while we are playing as the Rampart, either in week one or week ten or week twenty? Bearing in mind that you can get to mage guild level five in the Rampart. Okay, that's available. That's, a, that's, a, that's an option. Uh, you can put your money and effort and energy into mage guilding um, so there's a bit of an opportunity counterfactual thing going on there. But I have to say, I think this is a solid roster and a solid list of heroes. Similar to the knight, I think you're going to say, yeah, yeah, I'd like, I like this. Maybe just a little bit behind where the knights are, given that archery isn't always going to be, well, as the rampart though, archery is fine, right? The 1311 is a bit annoying. I'm going to give them a slight haircut compared to the knight on that first test. Something like whatever I said for the knight was 7.5. Maybe it should have been 8 for the knight, and I'm saying 7.5 for these guys. On the second test, how likely am I while playing someone else like anyone? Like, let's say, Fortress or, um, I don't know, Dungeon, Tower, to pick this hero type? I think moderately likely. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, we're in cleric territory for that. Um, the archery won't be useful very often for everybody. Noting that Kai has logistics, though, so who cares that archery sucks? And Genova is gold, so again, Ivor, Ivor turns off, Clancy turns off, Ryland goes away, Euphreton's not interesting at all to, to, to a foreign power. Um, yeah, I think we're in that same sort of six and a half... Range. I don't think they're as appealing as a knight for a foreign power either, but still solid. So let's have a look at the let's have a look at the podiums. Okay, so Ryland, where should we put you, man? You're not as good as Valeska. You don't deserve this spot here. It's not like you're just barely not as good. I think you are better at the rampart than the cleric is at the castle. So I want to be in this neighbourhood. Um. They're solid heroes. I, I actually think I underrate them when I play the game. Probably what'll happen is there'll be quite a few classes in this cluster of sort of 7 to 11 that I'm going to have difficulty discriminating against or, or discriminating between. Okay, looking at the druids now, and an interesting list. Uh, this is the Horn of the Abyss version. It's very, very similar, I think, to the Shadow of Death version, though. We have eight individuals to examine here. Now, a druid has an interesting primary stat profile, 0 to 1 2. Zero attack, two defense, okay, which is uh, which which matters, which means you, you you want you want to have an you want to be able to leverage that two defense right with an army of some kind. I, I would I would I would argue, and then one spell power and two knowledge. So for a start, when you're starting out, how 
likely am I to pick a hero of magic? I'm looking for that two knowledge. That that matters to me more than two spell power does. So that's good. But it's a little bit of a strange stat line. Um, they're not what you'd call a hybrid class of fighting and magic. I don't think it's still a hero of magic. But yeah, that's how it feels to me anyway. But it's kind of you know having your having your starting primary stats soaked up in two defense instead of having that over in power and knowledge makes them a little bit sketchy. With that said, they all come with Wisdom and the Rampart can get to level 5 Mage Guild, so there is a nice alignment there. However, as we start to look through the list, and we'll do this now, it's not exactly a list of superstars, right? Eris is good with Pegasi, and Pegasi are some of the least interesting and useful units in the Rampart. Eris is Speciality won't matter. His scouting is very good. Um, scouting is particularly useful in the early game. But protection from air, starting spell? Well, not really that good. So right off the bat, we're going to need to teach Ares something. We're going to need, you know, a mage guild. He can't just go out and, and get, get things done. Alagar, on the other hand, is... He comes with his spell book. It's already got Ice Bolt written in it. As you develop Alagar, he casts Ice Bolt really effectively, and hopefully he gets water magic. And he already knows sorcery because he plans to cast Ice Bolt a lot. So again, you've got this kind of what we said with Christian. It's a pre-built combo kind of guy. He, he he knows what he wants to be with his life. You can see there he's a gentleman in his mid-40s. He's been around, right? He, he knows what he's good at and what he's bad at. And he's great at casting Ice Bolt. And he, he, he makes sense. And he's a good hero. Um, Coronius, sadly, it would be so cool if Slayer was a good spell. Sadly, Slayer is unplayable. And I don't think the Horn of the Abyss changes it into anything. Like, it's not unplayable, but it's just a terrible spell. You don't want it in the early game, and you're never you're rarely going to cast it in the late game. Being able to teach it to other people is no, of no use, because it's a bad spell. So Coronius stinks. He's one level above the trash bin. He's basically sitting on the lid of the trash bin. He's looking down at Malcolm, who is in the bin, along with Sanya, sadly. So I jumped ahead there. Malcolm is one of those trash heroes that has to go in that bin. Elishar, intelligence is solid. Goes really well with wisdom. Curse is a nice uh, spell to know off the bat. And the intelligence works. It all kind of works, clicks together. Elishar's a good hero. Gem, first aid and first aid. Summon boat is actually quite handy to know right out of the gate, though. Malcolm, as we said, terrible. Melodia also is woeful. Uh, luck is an okay, handy skill to start with, but fortune is a spell you never cast, and... I don't even think in all of the abyss you cast it. Being a specialist at it doesn't help. Um, Uland is middle of the road. I love ballistics, so I give him a thumbs up for that. But being really good at casting cure doesn't matter. Overall, I, when you weigh it all up across the eight individuals, it's a lackluster performance. Alagar and Elishar are trying their best to get this group of people to work together and to actually put up a, a case. Let's think about the first test. How likely am I to choose a druid to lead my rampart army? Not very. Alagar, Elishar, yes, please come on board, fellas. Let's do it. Everyone else, meh. Okay, so we're in the sort of 4 out of 10. I'm not going to pick Melodia if I can pick someone else, right? So it might be 3.5. Four out of ten is probably too generous. I think I might be down in around the two and a half to three out of ten. And how how likely is a druid going to be to bully out the other classes and say, no ranger, you don't want that ranger, you want me. Or you don't want that warlock, you want me. Not very. Two and a half. Test number two. How likely am I to pick one of these individuals while playing as a foreign power? A hero of magic... You know, Elishar and Alagar, yeah, I, I would gladly take these guys uh, playing as the um, Tower, playing as the Conflux. Um, I could take Melodia, but I don't really want to. I could take Uland and be be okay with that and, and develop Uland into something that matters. I might want Eris' scouting, you know, uh, as a foreign power. Sort of the same thing happening with a cleric has, where it's like, oh yeah, if, if I've got the right conditions, I might. But I think I prefer a cleric to these guys. Um, so 4 out of 10. I'm saying 4-ish four, four, four out of 10. Probably that's a bit generous. 
Where should she go as a representative for the Druids? I'm afraid it will be in this bottom tier, this bottom ranking. There are some woeful classes here that we'll get to, so <laughs> I want to leave a bit of room for them. This is a pretty poor class, though, the Druid. I'm going to leave her at 17th for now. Okay, I need to speed up a bit. I think uh, the video is going to be too long otherwise. Alchemists. So here is the list of alchemists, and let's start, as we always do, with a reminder of what the stat list looks like. It's 1, 1, 2, 2. On top of that, this class starts with a spellbook and a spell written in that spellbook for a hero of might. So let's just reflect on that for a second. You get 1, 1. They're already ready to fight and help their army that they're leading, in some regard at least. And then they have 2, sk two spell power and 2 knowledge, which would make a cleric blush... And they have a spell book, and as we scroll down quickly on this right hand side, we can see that spell book is filled with really good spells for the early part of the game. Yeah, on the frontier of your empire, hiring one of these guys, they come ready to go. They've got one, one, two, two, and I can cast Magic Arrow, right? Iona can cast Magic Arrow like four times. That's good. Right, so there's a background radiation of goodness, I think, to alchemists that we really have to acknowledge here before we even begin the analysis. Now, let's have a look down through what we've got. As you can see, skill one is hovering really around scholar and mysticism. Everybody is either a scholar or a mystic. And neither of them are insanely great skills. With the scholar, scholar's fine, but you really only want one scholar in your army. So if I'm playing as the tower, I'm not going to want... There's going to be a diminishing returns thing going on with alchemists as you hire them. Mysticism is really quite poor in the vanilla game, but it is a solid skill in the Horn of the Abyss. With that said, if there's a wishing well nearby, mysticism's a waste. That takes some shine off, that, that first column of skills. Specialities, well, Fafna's good with Nagas, and I don't think that matters. Being good at helping Nagas be, be better fighters doesn't matter, I don't think. And interference is okay. Used to be resistance. Iona's great with genies, so is Thane. I hate genies. I don't build around them. I'm not going to try to rush my genies and uh, build a big stack of genies. Maybe if there's a dwelling out, an external dwelling, it matters. Advanced scholar and intelligence is okay, I guess. Um, but I don't like that speci th these specialities. Josephine's golems. Don't care about golems. I don't need you to make golems better. They're there to die or get in the way of things. Neela, great with armorer. Solid, solid... Um, skill and obviously a solid hero as a result. Gargoyles are a really good creature and scouting works well and you can get some good things done with Picadram in the early part of the game uh, with that combo. Rissa gives you free Mercury, which I love, and offense works really well. Free Magic Arrow, what's not to love about Rissa? Taurasar, I think, is a bit of a star. Uh, really, really great hero. You get a one one two two profile. He knows tactics. He can heal his own spell points as he's going. He can throw four Magic Arrows out of the gate. <laughs> And you get a ballista. A bit of a mixed bag of stuff going on, right, as we move our way through the specialities. And looking at the combination of skills doesn't quite click across the board everywhere. Let's apply the two tests. How likely am I to choose an alchemist to lead my army in the tower? They're up against wizards, and they're up against foreign, uh, you know, foreign forces wanting to push in. I think you're, you're, you're very, very likely to, to choose one of these individuals, right, to, to do the job, especially in the early game. I think I do prefer the Magic Arrow guys and the Haste guys to the Shield guys. So I think the Alchemist is in the same conversation as the Knight for attractiveness to the tower. I'm going to take, give it a slight haircut, give it seven and a half. I'm kind of using the Knight as a bit of a yardstick for the Heroes of Might here. Now, how likely is an Alchemist to push in and take over... Uh, in a foreign town. Quite likely. Give them a sort of a six and a half out of ten on the second test. So where should we put Josephine? Not as good as a knight, but better than a ranger. Here, sixth, next in line to the throne of the secondary podium. I think I'm happy with that. It's reasonable. You could maybe make a case for moving both of... Well, maybe you could make a case for moving... I think I like the knight better than the alchemist enough to say that there probably is a gap here and I'm ready to move Valeska up. I like alchemist, though. It's a really solid class. So I'll leave her there for now. Next cab off the rank is the wizard. Okay, and we have the list of individuals here. Dracon at the bottom we can ignore. 
Uh, he's a campaign hero. Right, what are the primary stats for a wizard? 0, 0, 2, 3. Okay, so no fighting ability at all, and then 2 spell power and 3 knowledge. So 3 knowledge is a pretty big buff compared to 2 knowledge, and certainly compared to 1 knowledge. And the 2 spell power is, is really, really nice as well. Um, I suppose they're wizards, right? So you would expect that in terms of um, flavour. Obviously the tower can get to level 5 mage guild, they all have wisdom. Cool, okay, right, we're, we're, in the, we're, we're, we're off to a fairly solid start, I would say. Looking through the creatures, Anya, I'm going to pronounce um, that wizard's name as Anya, that's how we pronounce it here in Ireland where I live, uh, although there's some symbols and stuff above the letters. Uh, you might call you might call um, this hero Ain, I don't know. Um, giving free gold, amazing, I love it. Yes, sign me up. Being a scholar, fine, okay, you're a wizard, it's likely that there'll be other wizards uh, and other spellcasters in this journey and having a scholar is, is going to be okay and Curse is a, is a fine starting spell. Um, astral Hypnotize doesn't matter and being good at Hypnotize whenever I've been Astral and gotten him up to level 15 or level 20 like finally someone who can actually cast Hypnotize he still can't like it, it just you can, there's nothing worth Hypnotizing on the field Kyra with Haste works really well uh, Diplomacy again I'm just going to sort of imagine is replaced with some good skill um, I'm not going to hold it against her She's not good for me because it's a wasted skill um, in the sense that I ban myself from hiring her in the first place. But yeah, I'm, I'm certainly not going to hold that against um, against that the, the class. Dearmouth with Fortune, uh, similar to Melodia, I think we talked about earlier. Totally useless, not good. Don't care about Fortune, and Intelligence is okay. Um, the zero zero two three makes her still hireable. She's not woeful. Um, Halon, okay, not bad. I mean, Mysticism's just all right, uh, even in the Horn of the Abyss. Stone Skin isn't a very good starting spell, though, so I don't love Halon. Uh, not, a, not a love. Serena, we have a trash bin hero, sadly. And so, at this point, from first down to sixth there, you're kind of going, oh, yeah, they're okay, and it's feeling like they're cleric-ish type of thing. Then you get to Solnir, the genie wizard Maybe the greatest hero in the game, uh, the poster, you know, hero uh, on the front cover of the <laughs> rule book. <laughs> Just an insanely good hero. Um, what we talked about before with, I don't remember which ranger it was, who, uh, Alamar, was it? Um, who had Ice Bolt and Sorcery and he knew what he wanted to do with his life. Solmir is that on speed he's just amazing right chain lightning is fantastic it's one of the greatest spells in the game you want solmir when you see him when he shows up his sorcery combines beautifully his wisdom makes it so that he's ready to learn other spells in the air school you want him to become an expert air mage air magic is um just the absolute obvious beeline skill f for him his destiny is foretold and he's going to be amazing for you there are a few other heroes in the game that can rival Solmia, I think, for sheer awesomeness. Theodorus at the end as well. Worthy mention. I really like a Theodorus. Magi is a strong, strong stack, assuming you can get, um, you know, you, you can recruit them. Uh, I, I waxed on about that in the creatures tier list, how hard it is to develop the dwelling. But this, the creatures themselves are awesome, obviously, Magi. And I love Ballistics. So I rate Theodorus probably more highly than the community does, but that's just how I feel. I love ballistics. I know that as a community you all think it's just meh, but I think it's awesome. And I have to be true to myself. So Solmir and Theodorus come in at the end and massively pick up the tab, right? Solmir's at the table at the end of the dinner, and he's the one saying, Waiter, give me the bill. I'll take it. I'll pay this bill because I'm Solmir and I'm amazing. Let's apply the, f the test. Okay, how likely am I to choose a wizard when playing as the tower? Obviously Solmir's a no-brainer. Theodorus, I'll snap him off, absolutely. But the other six... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm moderately likely, right? Because being a hero of magic does work with the tower creatures. Okay, you can do all kinds of cool things with these creatures. You can... They respond well to haste, they respond well to shield, they respond well to 
Uh, they pair well with direct damage spells. You can pile into a specific stack with your mages and your gremlins and then lightning bolt them. You know, it, 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 Heroes of Magic work with the tower. I think that, that from a design perspective, from a f design philosophy, they did get that right, or they did nail it. But the six wizards at the top are just all right. They're not insane. Um, so I think I'm going to give this class something like a seven for the attractiveness to the tower. Now, obviously, Solmir is the exception. He's a 10, or maybe a, a 12. How do I feel about these guys on the second test? How likely are you to hire a wizard when you're someone else? Solmir, absolutely. Theodorus, yeah, for sure. I'll take the, I'll take a Theodorus. I'll take a Halon out on the frontier of my borders. Yeah, and if I'm playing with diplomacy, I'll absolutely appreciate Kyra. I like Anya at the top. Ah, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good score. I'd say 7 out of 10 for the first, and again 7 for the second. You do need, out there in the world, as a foreign power, you need a, you need to be able to teach these guys spells to get, it, to get it working. You need a level 2 mage guild for them to immediately go and study. Because if you hire Dameth, or if you hire Astral, Astral is useless until he is. you can get him to a mage guild. And that's a bit of a... Mm, right? Compared to the... Alchemist who says, no, no, don't, don't worry about it. I've got a spell book and I've got magic arrow right here ready to go. I have two knowledge instead of Astral's three, but Astral doesn't know any spells. So I'm giving them a haircut compared to the Alchemist. I think they're not as good as a team as the Alchemists are. But they are solid in both tests. I'm using Theodorus as my uh, representative for the Wizards, for reasons I'll explain in a second. I think they're worse than an Alchemist. And... Hmm, this will be a close one. The Ranger had a little bit more appeal, I think, to the wider community than the Wizard will have. Do I want to put them just Alchemist Wizard, or do I want to swap this over and do something like this? Yeah. I think the Ranger has a little bit more universal appeal to the wider community. Okay, to the other factions, the non-Rampart factions, than the Wizard has. Conflux loves Wizards. Places like the Dungeon are going to love the Wizard. Um, but these secondary skills of all the stuff that was in there, Archery, Offense, um, the 1-3-1-1, one, 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 oh, I think it's close. I think it's close, and obviously the whole Soul Mirror effect. I'm going to make it, I'm going to do it like this for now. Um, one thing I might just point out uh, is the reason I'm using Theodorus and not Solmir is I know there are some of my viewers who like to don't really want to watch the two hours and they just want to flick through to the end and see how I, what I, what I, what I, where I put everybody. If I put Solmir at eighth, I'm going to get a lot of negative comments, uh, justifiably so because he doesn't belong um, as an individual certainly in that in that spot. So that's why I'm using Theodorus um, instead of Solmir. Uh, let's move on from Wizards to Demoniacs. Now, for those of you playing at home, yes, I am going to pronounce this Demoniac. Have at me. I might be wrong. It could be it could be a completely wrong pronunciation. So the Demoniac is the hero of might coming out of the Inferno. We have a stat profile of 2211, so exactly the same stat profile as the Knight. Bit of a bit of a secret tick mark just for that as a starting point. Now, what is the deal with the Demoniac? Let's have a bit of a, of a scan through. We've got a mixture of different people. We'll, we'll exor, ignore Z, I was going to say exor. We'll ignore Zeron at the bottom. He doesn't show up in the random maps I play. Uh, does he? I don't think he does show up. Um, maybe we should include him. Yeah, he doesn't tend to show up in the random maps I play anyway. So, Right out of the gate, we've got Carl with Gogs and Archery, so a hero who knows, again, what he's about. His speciality matches his skill. His scouting is solid. He's a really good hero. He's a really solid hero, someone you're going to pick up um, pretty often when you're playing as the Inferno. You're not going to love him as a foreign power. Um, my voice is starting to go already, so this is going to be hilarious. Fiona, I really love Fiona um, having 
uh, played a recent successful campaign with her. Hellhounds are the best creature in the entire uh, Inferno. Her scouting is great, especially in the early game. Ignatius, imps don't matter at all. Uh, interference I'm not that huge on, but tactics is solid. Uh, Marius is good with demons, which can be a pretty good thing if you are demon farming as your strategy. And advanced armor is a really, really solid secondary skill as well for her to start with. Nymus is the re- sort of mirror image of Marius. She's pit fiends instead of demons and offense instead of armor. Octavia's gold. Yes, please. I love free gold. Give me that all day long. Basic scholar. What? Why? Why are you a scholar? Why is that a thing? Uh, I don't get why you're a scholar, but the rest of what you're saying is great. Pyre comes with the Ballista and the Artillery combo and Logistics. So it's she's Christian, but on speed, the Logistics is just delicious. I love the combo of the Artillery and the Ballista. Really, really amazing hero, Pyre. Rashka is a bit of a train wreck. Specialist at Ifrit. I don't need you to be... I love Ifrit, but I don't need you to be a specialist at them. Uh, he has basic wisdom, and he's a basic scholar as well. But he starts the game with one spell power and one knowledge. So he's a nombo. He's a walking nombo. Opposite of a combo kind of thing. I don't like Rashka. Um, so with that all said, how do we feel about these guys as a class? Imps, demons and pit fiends as a specialist. Uh, Alright. Hellhounds, sure. And gogs, matter. Um, if you're playing in the Horn of the Abyss, the Magog is a, is a powerful creature. A very powerful creature. In the vanilla game, Magogs, I think, are to be avoided because uh, because of the uh, friendly fire problem, which, again, go check out my Creatures tier list video if you want to learn more about what I think about that stuff. Um, but overall, I think the Demoniac is solid, right? It feels solid. The skills feel okay. Let's apply the test. I'm playing as the Inferno. How likely am I to pick one of these individual people over someone else, over a heretic or over a foreigner? from a different faction. Fairly likely. I'm going to say 6 out of 10. Um, Ignatius is going to have trouble. Nymus is not necessarily going to be, you know, to the exclusion of all others. Rashka, I'm definitely setting him aside. I think it might be 6 out of 10. I'll say 6 out of 10 for test 1. Test number two, how likely am I to pick one of these guys instead of someone else when I'm playing as Fortress? Or Castle? Or Rampart? Not very. Uh, Not very. Octavia and Pyre? Come on board. Yeah, let's see what we can do. I've got some good army for you here in the Rampart. Pyre, I want you to take these Elves. And I want you to take the Dwarves and Centaur army I've got. I want you to run around the map with your logistics and your awesome ballista. This all clicks for me. Yes, please. But no one else. Not really. Like, not no one else really. I don't think. Uh, cuts the mustard. Four out of ten for the, for the team. Four out of ten. So, Fiona is my favourite demoniac. Where is she going to go? Six and four. We gave them. They're worse than a wizard. And I think they're better than a cleric. Ooh. What did we give this guy? It was the opposite. Was it four and six? Six and four and four and six. I think it's probably a close call between these two. Yeah, the demoniacs are better at the inferno than the cleric is at the castle. But then it flips, flips over. And they're much less attractive to a foreign power than the clerics are, I think. Um, this is close. I'm actually going to do this move here. And I'm going to give Fiona that 13th spot. I think she... I think these two are similar in attractiveness to, uh, in terms of desirability and, and quality. Star power. So that's the demoniac. Moving on to the heretic. And we have the heretics uh, here in front of us. Let's begin, as we always do, what is the primary stat list for the heretic? Well, it's 1-1-2-1. One, one, one. one attack, one defense. Kind of middling starting point, like the alchemist, okay. And then two spell power and only one knowledge. Oh, for a hero of magic with one knowledge? Oh, no. No. Come on, the Inferno can get up to level five. I don't want you wasting your time with attack and defense. I'd rather have two knowledge than I... 
I would almost trade the one attack and one defense for one more knowledge, uh, which we don't have, which is a bit of a shame. So right out of the gate, basic wisdom for everyone and one knowledge doesn't feel like a great combo. Two spell power, it's like, well, how am I going to leverage that? You, you're probably going to leverage two spell power by having um, high damage, highly damaging spells or highly impactful uh, buffs in the early game. Well, let's look at the starting spells, shall we? Bloodlust, Protection, View Earth, Haste, Weakness is good. Fireball with one knowledge? Who is Fireball? Zarfax has Fireball, but he only has one knowledge, so he can't even cast it. Inferno, well, Inferno is a great spell, um, and obviously Zyron can't, can't cast it on day one either, but at least he gets to hopefully quickly level into uh, some spell points and be able to cast it. Um, and then Zydar's Stone Skin. So these starting spells aren't very good and don't gel with having two spell power in the first place. So I'm already kind of slumping in my chair a little bit. Ash the Heretic, let's have a look. She's good at Bloodlust, but that doesn't matter that much. Uh, so bloodlusted creatures do a bit more damage than they would have, I guess, is her buff. And her secondary secondary skill. Her second second skill is basic eagle eye. So Ash is poor. Cool artwork, though. All of them have amazing artwork. Axis, mysticism. All right. Okay. In Horn of the Abyss, yeah. But protection from air. Blech. Aiden, intelligence. Decent. Okay. And view earth is a spell you'll cast. But these guys need to learn spells, you know, in order to be good. Khaled gives free sulfur, which I love, and he, and haste is a decent spell. Olima is kind of like Cuthbert, a, quite a solid hero. I quite like the weakness, and I love ballistics. Zarfax, again, yeah. Leadership and fireball don't really go together. So your leadership, I don't need those creatures to have... I don't need you to be a great leader while casting fireball. So he's a bit of a nombo hero. It doesn't really go together, right? A little bit like Rashka. Zyron's Inferno is cool, and the fact he can teach to other people is actually really, really cool. And Zydar, blech. Sorcery is your thing, but you only have ten spell points to start with. And the spell you start with is Stone Skin. If he started with Fireball, if Zydar had Fireball, or if the Fire School of Magic had a, a Tier 2 damage spell that worked properly, as I think we all wish it did, um then he would be good, but he doesn't really click. None of them click because the DNA of the class just doesn't click. Right, I've, I've, I've said enough bad things about them. How likely are you to pick a heretic over a demoniac or someone else to lead your inferno? Not very. We're in, we're in druid territory here, right? How likely are you as a foreign power to choose one of these to lead your, your army, presumably uh, in the, you know, in either a hybrid way or in a magic heavy way not very not very i'm going to take a wizard if i'm if i'm a magic heavy um army or town um and i've got a mage guild do i want to hire a, her a heretic and wait for them to level up so that they can finally learn lightning bolt or do i just want to hire dameth that really weak wizard who has three knowledge 30 spell points right out of the gate do i want to hire an alchemist instead Right, so these guys score 2 out of 10 and then 2 out of 10 again. So I think these are worse than a druid. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really solid on that. They these guys are worse than a druid. So where should Zarfax go? He's down here in the doldrums. He's worse than a druid. Is there likely to be someone else on that list that needs to go here and in between? There's one class in particular I'm saving 20th for. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to put him 19th, it might be 18th, I don't think he's 20th because there's one class in particular that I'm really going to wrap bag on um, coming up in the not too distant future. Okay, so we are nearly nearing the halfway mark, I hope you're still with me, I hope you're enjoying this narrative which is probably over, over being overdone, but... I can't help myself. Like it's just such a cool game. You know, I've got to talk about it. How can you not how can you not, you know, just talk about it forever? I have to try because you're going to get annoyed with me because I'm taking too long. Heretics are done. What's next on the list? We're into the necropolis and we're going to be talking about the death knight.
So Necropolis, that classic town type, unique all unto itself, and notoriously difficult to put into tier lists and rankings, the various um, creatures, heroes, skills, and so on. Um, across all of the videos I've done, it's, 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 it's been the most troublesome. So let's see how we go here. We've got here the list. Now we're going to ignore Heart Lich at the bottom. He just doesn't come up, I don't think, in the templates I play anyway. Ranlu is a thing though. He's been added as part of the Horn of the Abyss expansion. What are the primary skills for a Death Knight? Well, it's 1-2-2-1. Two, two, one. Very peculiar. One attack, two defense, two spell power, and one knowledge. So, yeah, interesting. Then on top of that, they start with a spell book and a spell on the right-hand side. Very much the same idea as a as a alchemist in that regard, but they don't have the two knowledge. They've got two defense instead. You're, you're only casting your magic arrows a couple of times in the early game, having just hired them. So I'm already thinking about alchemists and how great they are. You've got a hero of might that starts with a spell book and a useful spell, as you can see scrolling down. Slow isn't is amazing as a spell, but I don't desperately need to know it on day one. Haste and Magic Arrow, oh yeah, yeah, really, really good. So I already love this class, even before we, we start the analysis proper. So Chana is good with whites, don't care, but she knows Magic Arrow and tactics right out of the gate. Yeah, so Chana, solid. Like, I, I don't care that the white, about the whites, the rest of it is a great story. Clavius, woo, yeah, give me gold, give me necromancy, give me offense, give me magic arrow. I want everything that you're offering, man. I love Clavius. I take him all the time. Galthran, great with skeletons. Well, guess what? You you know, the Necropolis, a lot of the time, is building around a huge skeleton ball of, um, of death, and Galthran's a great person to do that. Giving them armor, great. Giving them casting shield on them, great. Right, it all clicks together. Isra is good with the necromancy, Okay, great, that's cool. Um, Isra is totally useless to a foreign faction, but is going to be very, very strong uh, for the Necropolis. Moandor uh, comes off a bit. I don't really like Moandor. I don't think you need to be buffing liches. It's not a thing, really, and learning stinks. Um, Straker stinks. Okay, Walking Dead, not very good. Interference, whatever. He knows Haste, which is a strange thing. I guess Haste and Walking Dead might be a bit of a combo, but not really. Um... Tamika, again, uh, helping Black Knights be better than what they already are. Not very applicable very often, uh, but she comes with offense and magic arrow, so kind of like Chana, like, yeah, fine. And then Vokial, a bit of a weirdo. Like, vampires are... It's useful to buff vampires because they're such a key unit, such a key creature. He's very, very attractive to the Necropolis. Artillery is a weird thing for him to know. You've got to buy him a Ballista. I know, so it's probably not going to hit that often. Stone skin, who cares? Um, and then Ranlu, I actually found I didn't use Ranlu for anything important in the campaign I played recently. Um, he didn't end up. I think he famously didn't end up fighting a single battle. <laughs> but looking at the character, obviously in general, you've got the, the uh, Christian thing going with ballista, artillery, and then he knows haste, which is a random thing for him to know. It doesn't gel with the ballista, obviously. Um, but a, a really solid uh, hero as well in that in, 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 the, in the roster. Right, let's apply the test. How likely will we be to choose a Death Knight while playing as an Acropolis? Extremely likely. <laughs> I think maybe, if it's not 10 out of 10, it's 9.5 out of 10. They can be pushed out by necromancers, they can be pushed out by foreign foreigners um, that have superstar qualities, such as Solmir. Okay, I'm going to say 9.5 out of 10. You don't have to build yourself around necromancy, especially not when you're in the Horn of the Abyss. So, amazing, right? An amazing choice. So much value right out of the gate. How likely are we to choose a Death Knight from this list while playing as a non-necropolis town? This is a hard one to answer. Because they come, there's so much value. It doesn't matter that Tamika is Black Knights and necromancy because she has offense. She has a 1-2-2-1 and Magic Arrow with a spell book. You get all this value. So they do. I do. I, I would hire a Death I'd hire Clavius in a heartbeat, man, to, to lead my, let's say, stronghold forces. He's raising skeletons that I have to dismiss or find a home for, or maybe I put them behind a, a, a gate, uh, behind a, 
And in the, in the Horn of the Abyss, you can leave uh, troops scattered around at, at different mines and stuff. You could find a use for those skeletons, maybe, but you don't care. Are they as good as a knight, a normal knight? For other foreign powers? I don't think so, right? Because the necromancy and the specialities don't, cr don't click as well as they do for an alchemist. So they don't score as highly as an alchemist would um, for, this, for the secondary test. Don't they? Maybe it's in and around, right? So maybe it's in and around six and a half, seven for their appeal to a foreign power. Maybe I'm being too generous, but the nine and a half for the for the for the base for, for the necropolis is is too strong to ignore. So I think these guys are better than a normal knight for that reason. And as you can see, that means they're on the podium as things stand. I think death knights are really good. The necropolis loves them, and foreign powers will begrudgingly hire them because of just how much value you get, what, what you get for your money. I don't think they're going to come, they're certainly not first for me because I can think of it one or two others. They might be silver, I don't, I, I'm going to say bronze for now for the Death Knight. Alright, let's look at the necromancers now in the necropolis. So we have the necromancy blanket um, skill that carries over the same from the Death Knight. And the weird thing that means is that as a hero of magic, these guys don't have wisdom, except for Ashlyn that we'll talk about in a second at the top. So you substitute wisdom for necromancy, and that creates a bit of an interesting dynamic. In terms of their primary stats, we've got one zero two two. So they have one attack, which seems odd. Zero defense, and then two spell power, two knowledge. I like the two two. So they have the same list as a cleric. Uh, that means they're a solid spellcaster for me, and. Um, someone that you can begin leveling up as a spellcaster doing what they do from the time that you first hire them, either in the early game or the late game. So we're off to a reasonably good start in terms of the stat line. Let's have a look at the individuals. We have Ashlyn up front and wow, okay. So Ashlyn is nearly as good as Solmir. She comes with Meteor Shower, a huge damage dealing spell right out of the gate. However, she has two knowledge and 20 spell points to start with. She's going to struggle to cast Meteor Shower very frequently compared to Solmir casting his Chain Lightning. So she's not as good as Solmir. Uh, the Necromancy is great for the Necropolis, but useless for everyone else. Nagash, I don't know why I said that then, that's just obviously true and I've already said it before. Nagash gives you free gold. Great. Intelligence works really well as well. Protection from air is a bit of a letdown. Nimbus, sadly, is one of our trash can heroes. He needs to hop in the bin alongside Malcolm and the others. Sandro is a very interesting hero, one you can really build around. Starting with slow, doesn't gel that well with sorcery, but he is someone you can, yeah, he starts 1022 and then you can build up into someone who is an expert air mage, casting chain lightning uh, with uh, specialities in sorcery, or casting meteor shower um, while raising skeletons. All works together very nicely. He's a pretty popular hero, I think, with the community as well, Sandro. I played with Septiana in the previous Necropolis campaign. She was my chief main hero, uh, so a lot of affection for Septiana. In truth, though, she's not very good. Death Ripple isn't a very good spell, and her speciality in it doesn't matter. Certainly, I didn't find it, it didn't matter. Being able to teach Death Ripple and other stuff to other people is okay, given that there aren't any other scholars in the, in the list. Then we come to Thant. Whoa. So Animate Dead is an absolutely key spell for the Necropolis. Being good at Animate Dead is going to matter. Being able to regenerate spell points out on the adventure map with Mysticism will help. Thant is amazing, but he's only amazing for the Necropolis. He is completely useless outside of the Necropolis. Vitamina, exact same story. And then Xi at the bottom, Zai. I had Zai in the previous campaign, I wasn't sure how to pronounce her name. Expert stone skin or uh, specialist at stone skin does not matter and learning stinks. So Zai, not very interesting. I don't think. So we have a bit of a mixed bag going on here. We've got two insane heroes in Ashlyn and Thant. And then everyone else, we've got a couple of solid entries here. Sandro, Nagash, solid, solid. And then the rest are all kind of chaffy and Nimbus is a joke. So, let's apply the test. How likely are we to choose one of these characters to lead our Necropolis over the
the competition, and the competition is the Death Knight, largely, as well as foreigners. Um, I think we can kick foreigners out pretty reliably. We can say, no, 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 you're going to pick me over a, a wizard or someone else coming in um, to, to challenge, or, you know, a cleric or something, because I've got the necromancy, and generally the roster is strong enough. We also have the two superstars that you're going to pick. So I think we need to give the necromancer a pretty generous score on the first test. Maybe an 8, I would say, out of 10 for the first pillar. The second pillar, how likely am I to choose one of these uh, while playing as a foreign power? Only Ashlyn. Okay, o only Ashlyn, maybe Sandro. No one else. So they score pretty badly. Nagash, maybe. You might take Nagash. You, you're going to score something in around 5 out of 10. It might That might be, even be a bit generous. So I think it's something like 8.5 maybe I'll give them for, for test 1 and 5 out of 10 for test 2, just acknowledging the epicness of Ashlyn. Septiana is my representative, rightly so. 8.5 and, and 5... Are we in this region? I think we are, right? 8.5 is a really solid score. You're going to push out other heroes from the Necropolis. You do have Nimbus in your list, though. Are you better than an Alchemist? I think they're a bit worse than an Alchemist, and I don't really want to put either of these classes down here at this point, so I'm going to promote the Alchemist and give the Necromancer sixth place. I'm going to do that just for now. There will be a Reckoning at the end. The next cab off the rank is Overlords, and this is the roster of eight individuals. Let's have a look, shall we? The primary stat list for an Overlord is 2211, just like the Knight and the Demoniac, uh, which gets a bit of a thumbs up for me. Um, I, I like that stat line for my Heroes of Might. It it's just feels good. It feels nice. The dungeon is a place that likes to deal damage from afar, and having a high attack just does feel quite nice. Looking through the roster here, it's, as you can see, a kind of a mixed bag of specialities. We have, basically, it's leadership, offense, and tactics all jumbled up together in, um, in, in a sort of a random mix. The secondary second skills, then, are the same thing again, except we have a smattering of scouting. Logistics is amazing, artillery and, uh, and interference, but we'll come back to that as we go through each one. Agit, I love Beholders, really, really great unit. His ability to specialize in Beholders really starts to matter. Leadership, when it triggers with Beholders, works really nicely. Agit's a good hero. Arlac is Christian um, in the dungeon, works really well. Basic Offense uh, is a solid skill to start with. Dace, Minotaurs I don't love specializing in because they're tier 5, but Minotaurs are amazing and... Dace's ability will, will trigger and matter. Tactics and offense, sign me up. Damacon gives you free gold and advanced offense right out of the gate. He's going to make your troops, your harpy hags and stuff, hit like a truck. And he's giving you free gold each turn. What's not to love? Gunnar is one, it's just, whoa, like Pyre, just like, whoa, yeah, logistics, amazing skill. And he's an expert at it, or specialist at it is the right word. Plus tactics, amazing. Oh, are we convinced yet? Lorelli. Harpies are awesome. I love leadership and I love scouting. Shakti. Troglodytes aren't amazing, but being a specialist at tier 1 is going to pay dividends in the early game. Not so much in the late game, being a specialist troglodyte master, hiring you on week, you know, hiring you in week 6 or something, not going to hit as hard. But offense and tactics, great big tick mark there. Sinker is unfortunately a dog's breakfast. Manticores don't matter, they're a terrible unit, and specialising them in is even more stupid. Um, her leadership, okay, is, is, is a redeeming feature. Basic Scholar? What? Why? Why are you a Scholar with 2211? I'm not even going to buy you a spellbook. So, I don't like Sinker. I think she's, she's bad. She's, she's not in the bin, but she's not good. She's really, really not good. With that disappointing part at the end said, everyone else is, a, is, is solid, is so, so solid. Right, so let's apply the test. How likely are you to pick an overlord to lead your dungeon army, to lead your dungeon forces to greatness over someone else, a warlock? And warlocks have a little asterisk on them that we'll talk about in a second. Over a warlock or over a 
foreign uh, hero? I say very likely. I think you're very likely to pick an overlord. They are the, just because they are awesome everywhere except for Sinker. Seven out of eight of them are just saying, you can take me, take me, I'm great. Look at my skill set. Tactics, offense, logistics, leadership, all of which the dungeon creatures adore. <laughs> okay, all of which they adore. I'm gonna give them a, I'm gonna give them an eight and a half, pushing towards nine for their attractiveness to the dungeon, for their ability to bully out the other classes. For the second test, how likely am I to pick a, a, an overlord to lead my forces when I'm playing as a foreign faction? Well, let's think about that. What if I'm the castle? What if I'm the rampart? What if I'm the fortress? What if I'm tower? Arlac? Right. Damacon? Gunnar? Yes. Yes. They're good. <laughs> they're really, really good. Like, they're really solid. 2 2 1 1. Tactics, offense. What more do you want? I'm going to say 8 for the second for the second test. So there's no one on here. There's no Solnir on here, right? But it's the consistency down the pack that is giving them that that really high score for me. Noting that Sinker stinks. So I think these guys are above the Death Knight. Okay? And bit of a spoiler, I don't there's there's one other class that I am thinking of for for contesting for the first spot. And I'm going to wait till I get to that class to try and make that decision. But Overlords, for me, as a team, pull their weight so hard in both domains. In the domestic domain and in the foreign domain. So for now, it's a tentative first place for the Overlords, but they are at risk. Let's get on to Warlocks. Okay, so the Warlock list. Now, Warlocks have a profile of 0032. They're kind of the spiritual opposite to the Wizard. Three spell power and only two knowledge. I do prefer it the other way around, especially early on. So there's a first little thing. If we're comparing them to wizards as a starting point, eh, not quite as good as 0023, I don't think. They all have the wisdom, same way that the other heroes of magic tend to have as we go in their first skill slot, as we can see. So let's have a think about how 0032 plays as we go down the list. First creature, first hero, sorry, off the rank is Alamar. Resurrection and Scholar. So I come out of the gate knowing how to cast Resurrection and I'm able to learn, once I get to Advanced Scholar, how to teach it. Do I need to be an expert scholar? I think I need to be an expert scholar to teach other people how to cast it. Resurrection is the third best spell in the game. I mean, it's insanely good. It's an amazing spell. In Horn of the Abyss, it's still brilliant. And being able to guarantee that I know it straight out of the gate is is just superb. Now, I do need to rat ratchet up my knowledge pretty quickly to be able to leverage it properly with only 20 spell points, as opposed to Solmir's 30 spell points. Amazing hero, Alamar. You're going to pick him if you get a chance. However, that isn't the case with everyone. I'm going to skip ahead, actually, to Dark, to Dima and Jedi. If you look at Jedi, he's the same hero. More or less, except without the Scholar thing, and he's got the Advanced Wisdom ready to go. Okay, so they're more or less the same hero. Both of them are insane. Dima, also insane, right? He has the same thing that Aislinn has, Meteor Shower, right out of the gate. Don't care about scouting. All three of these heroes, Alamar, Dima, and Jedi, are just awesome, and in that top shelf of heroes of, in terms of desirability. Now, what about the rest of the list? Darkstorn... Basic learning, and I'm really good at casting stone skin, yawn fest. No thank you. Really bottom of the barrel. Not a good hero. Not terrible, but not, not exciting at all. Gion is a trash can hero. Oh no, that's bad. Jagar is bad. Right, mysticism. Ah, he's not bad. He's all right. Jagar's okay. But he's, 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 he's wanting, right? Malekith... Sorcery, basic sorcery, cool. Okay, you're going to be a damage-dealing warlock. That's cool. But Bloodlust is what you start with. So you need to be able to teach these guys spells. Right? The Malekith needs a mage guild to be good. Sephiroth I don't mind at all. Um, Crystal is decent. Intelligence goes really nicely with 0032. 
It would be nice if she knew a better spell than protection from air. So we have a massive... There is no other class in the game that is as widely spread in terms of quality. At one end of the spectrum you have Alamar and Jedite. At the other end you've got Gion. So this is going to be a tricky one. How likely are Warlocks going to be? Is the team as, a, as an eight... As an eight Cox... Coxless eight. How likely is this team going to be to push out other heroes in the uh, dungeon? Well, it depends on whether you get these three guys or not. If you don't get these three guys, not very. <laughs> they can't hold their own. They're going to be bullied, easily bullied by the overlords. If you do get one of these three, you are going to easily snap them off ahead of anyone else in the game. Um, so how do we rank them as a team? As a team, I think they, they hemorrhage down to about seven and a half because of how bad some of the players on the team are. Yeah, I'm saying seven and a half. How likely are you to pick a Warlock as a foreign power? I actually think moderately likely. Yeah, yeah. obviously you're going to pick the, the three amazing guys who do Resurrection and, Stu and, um, Resurrection and Meteor Shower. You're going to do that everywhere except for in the Necropolis and maybe the Conflux. You're going to want these heroes. So their desirability, yeah, is, is reasonable. I'll give them maybe a 6 out of 10 for that reason. Um, because of the fact that they have those superstars. None of the rest of them are particularly... Well... Then again, Malekith... You could pay, hire Malekith in the tower, in the conflux, and be pretty happy. Right? You could hire Sephiroth for the crystal, and the fact that she does click together her intelligence and her spell power and her wisdom and her knowledge click together. So maybe I'm being a bit hard. Maybe I'd say, so... Seven and a half for primary and seven... Yeah, they probably deserve a seven, right? For for that secondary test of the foreign power test. Seven and a half and seven? But it's a mixed bag. There's It depends on who... Which warlock you get. It really depends on who you get. <laughs> so I think warlocks are in this area. And I don't know where... I think Warlocks might be a little bit better than a Wizard because of the three superstars. Well, but the Wizards have two super... Well, have Solmir. And they have more consistency. The Wizard has a little bit more consistency in appeal than the Warlock. It's close, though. You, you could swap these two over. I think you could easily swap these two over. I'm going to let Wizards beat the Warlock, though, for now. Right, we're off to the Stronghold. What can be said about a Barbarian? Well, they're very offensive. Every single one of them has the offense skill right down the middle as skill one. The primary stat list on top of that is four zero one one, so four attack, zero defense, and the bare minimum on spell casting. So we're talking unambiguous, right? And very much in theme with the flavor of what we all think of as a barbarian in these in these kind of games. Having massively high attack um, buffing is Really, really useful, um, but it can come at the cost of being a little bit fragile to damage um, on, the, on the flip side. Looking across the list, we've got Craghack out of the gate, and he's really good at offense, and he starts with advanced offense. So he's the most offensive of all the barbarians, and a bit of a poster uh, hero for the, for the class. Gretchen, um, goblins, stink, and being great at making goblins good isn't going to be very useful for very long. Pathfinding's a nice skill. Gurnison is the Christian of the Stronghold and solid for that reason. Comes with artillery, comes with a blister. Great, and offense is a great place to start. Jabarkas, orcs, stink, and they don't care about offense anyway. Krellian, um, okay, ogres are a good creature. Shiva, rocks are a good creature, but I don't love tier 5 specialities, as I said before. Tyraxor can be really, really nice. Uh, Wolf Raiders can be a really solid uh, option for you in the early game. Combined with the tactics, you can engineer some really, really nice fights, especially against the environment. Um, when you go up in against an enemy hero, those wolf raiders are going to get lightning bolted, and he drops off a little bit, I think, in the late game as a result. Yogg, Cyclops speciality does not matter at all, but the ballistics kind of goes nicely. You've got this idea that he's really good at uh, attacking cities, and his offense doesn't matter with Cyclops either. So, how do we feel? Well, 
Let's think about the first test. How likely are we to pick a barbarian over someone else in the stronghold? I think quite likely. Part of the problem I have is that goblins and orcs and ogres don't need plus four attack, really. Then any more than they need plus two, plus two from a knight. A knight would do just as well at serving the denizens of the stronghold with plus two, plus two and leadership. Plus two, plus two and leadership instead of plus four, plus zero and offense will do just as it'll help an orc or a goblin army or a wolf rider army. Like wolf raiders love leadership. They really love leadership. So it almost feels like a knight does a better job of serving the stronghold. A slightly better job. Like, it's not that Craghax and, and, his, and his friends stink or anything at, at doing the job. They're, they're good, but they are a bit more of a glass cannon and they don't always synergize exactly with what's needed in a given fight. Whereas plus two, plus two in leadership is going to just be more resilient, you know, especially in the early game than uh, plus four, plus zero and offense, I, I think. So I kind of feel like if the knight is 8 out of 10, these guys are probably 7-ish out of 10, maybe hemorrhaging down to about 6.5 out of 10 in terms of their appeal for leading an army of stronghold creatures around. Part of the problem is I don't love stronghold creature armies. I don't really want to build a big stronghold army that often. So 6.5 out of 10 for test 1. How likely am I to pick a barbarian over a, f uh, over, uh, a domestic a hero class elsewhere. So if I'm playing as castle, rampart, fortress, I think I'm moderately likely. These skills are useful. Um, fortress could get on quite well, having plus four, plus zero to balance out the high defensive creatures that they have. Pathfinding, yeah, cool. Scouting, and yeah, the offense works. Bit of a shame that you specialize in creatures that I don't plan on hiring. So I'm going to give you a five and a half out of ten. It's a solid, like there, there's no one bad on this list who overtly stinks um, but you know they're not going to be massively more attractive than uh, the, domestic, the, the, the domestic heroes I don't think 6 out of 10 ish so where should we put Crag Hack as the representative of barbarians I think they're worse than warlocks yep they're a bit worse than warlocks uh, as a team happy with that instinctively um, here ish maybe 10th maybe 12th and the second class in the Stronghold is the Battle Mage. And here we have the Battle Mage list. And before we get started, I don't mind telling you that the daggers are out for me with this class. Um, I don't like Battle Mages, and I am going to explain more a bit, a bit about why that is as we go. Let's begin with, shall we, the primary stat list. Okay, just, just let these numbers sink in. 2, 1, 1, 1. So we've got five points. Three of them are allocated to attack and defense, and then one spell power and one knowledge. For a battle mage, okay, clues in the name. Here's my problem. This is my problem. Skill one is wisdom. They all have basic wisdom, which means as intuitively as we're hiring them, it's like, I'm someone who's gonna be great at casting difficult spells. Difficult spells tend to cost a lot of money, and they tend, to, they tend to leverage off high spell power. But at the same time, I'm also telling you that I have one spell power and one knowledge as a start. As I level up, I'm going to often level up my attack and defense instead of those other uh, two primary skills, just as a by the by. Which immediately means that to me, you're a failed class. You don't make sense as a class. Right? 2 1 1 1, basic wisdom? Just what? It's like the heretic. It's like, what? I, I don't. How am I supposed to. What am I supposed to do with this? So I've attacked too early, right? Let's, let, me, let me sort of explain more as we go. So let's, start, let's have a look at Dessa. So Dessa's actually a good hero because logistics rocks. It's amazing and he's good at it. So Dessa's an exception. I'll hire him and I'll use him certainly as a stronghold, but certainly. At, you know, he'll, he'll show up elsewhere and I'll be able to make use of him as well with his logistics. Good hero. Okay. Good. Okay, we've seen these before. We've seen Sandro before, right? Basic sorcery, basic wisdom, and I'm a specialist at sorcery. Wonderful. Congratulations. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, well, I have two attack and one defense and I don't know how to cast spells. 
And my starting spell isn't even a damage dealing spell. Bloodlust, right? And like this. Like from a flavor point of view, yeah, the battle mage. You, you picture it. You picture the battle mage buffing a big army of creatures while also buffing their attack and defense. I get where they were trying to go with it, but wisdom is such a bad skill for these guys to have, and sorcery is, is a woeful speciality for them to have. Now, Gundala is interestingly a hero of magic that has offense as her speciality, understands offense, and slow. So she's a barbarian with her stats. Um, messed up. Instead of having 4-0, she's got 2-1 for attack and defense. And then one of her skills is just burnt on wisdom. So she's just a bad barbarian. Uh, Gundula, for me. Oris has the enviable prize, in my opinion, of being the worst hero in the game, bar none. So in the trash can, with Malcolm and the others, there's a special compartment at the very bottom of the trash can for Oris where she goes right down into the very depths of the trash can. Below her is the hard steel of the trash can itself, specialising in eagle eye, with basic wisdom, a starting stat profile that does not align with basic wisdom in any way, shape or form, and her starting spell is protection from air. Worst hero ever. Okay, bar none. Saurang. Okay, I love gems. Free gems, gimme, gimme, gimme. Your interference is okay, your bloodlust is alright, you're better than most of the rest of these. Tarek is solid, I love tactics, being good at haste can, is kind of okay, is relevant. They, you, creatures are even faster than they would otherwise be. And haste is a good starting spell for someone who is as dumb as having one spell power and one knowledge. Um, so there's a saving grace there. Tarek's alright. Vey, okay, I like magic arrow out of the gate, I like ogres and I like leadership. And then Zubin, pretty poor. Okay, artillery is dopey because you don't start with a ballista, I've got to buy you one. And being good at precision isn't useful. I hate the battle mage, I hate the class. I never go for these if I can help it. Um, that said, I'm sure that I have a video on the channel where I played as Gerd. Maybe Dessa and Gerd? I would have taken Dessa, but I'm nearly sure I used Gerd for some stuff. Um, Probably because she had a good starting army and I just swallowed it anyway. Because I'm going to say, oh, I never take them, and then you guys are going to find me on the channel doing the exact opposite. Okay, desirability. I think I'm happy to say I've never hired Oris, except as a courier hero. All right. Anyway, let's get on with it. How likely am I to choose a battle mage to lead my stronghold army to glory? Three out of ten. Okay, I'll give them three because two one is something. You're you're a fighter. Some of you have some reasonable things going on: logistics, sorcery, offense, tactics, leadership. These are useful. So I'm moderately likely to use you. I might I might I might I might give you a three and a half. Okay, you are going to get bullied by the barbarian and by foreigners uh, in the in your domestic town of the stronghold. How likely am I to pick one of you to lead my foreign army? You know, it's not it's not unthinkable. Maybe I'm being too hard on them. Two one one one, in somewhere like the castle, and you pick Gundula. Okay, that's basically like a knight, but instead of leadership, it's offense and a spell book, and I know how to cast slow. It's actually not bad, right? Like that's actually not terrible. Maybe I'm being a bit hard on them. It's the wisdom that sucks. So three and a half domestic, and I'll say maybe three and a half for foreign. So they're, they're worse than a cleric. Are they worse than a druid? I was going to say they were, like, here, 18th. That's where I wanted to put them. Let's have a look. So, yeah, we've got to choose whether Gundula is going to come in between. Is she better than a heretic? They're too much of a, a mixed bag of... It can, they've got conflicting storylines. There's, there's a conflict at the very core of the design of the class that none of them... It's the same as the heretic, that none of them can really overcome. The druid has two knowledge out of the gate, okay? And they're likely to develop knowledge and spell power as they level up. They have one point in... Sorry, they have two defense. Yeah. So, similar sort of problem. They've got two defense. This thing's got two attack and, and one defense instead of having 
spell power and knowledge. Anyway, that's enough. Battle mages. Yeah. Beastmasters are next. So here are the Beastmasters, and we're off to the fortress. A Beastmaster has is kind of the opposite of a Barbarian. You've got zero attack, four defense, and then one and one for power and knowledge. And instead of being an expert, uh, or instead of all of them knowing offense, they all know armorer instead, which is the defense buffing skill. Similar to the Barbarian, most of them are creature-specific specialities. Here's the difference, though. The creatures that they specialize in are good. Instead of gremlin, uh, uh, sorry, goblins and orcs and stuff, it's cool creatures like wyverns, basilisks, gnolls, serpent flies, and lizard men, all creatures that I love buying and love fighting with. I don't think that 0411 is a very useful stat line for this town though, for Fortress, okay? The theme is there. These creatures all have moderately mediocre attack but amazing defense. They tend to have amazing HP, just good moves and then good value for money. They're good, you know, they're good creatures to buy for that reason from an economic standpoint. 0411 doesn't help that like very... I prefer 2211, yeah? And uh, Armourer... Armourer's cool. Armourer's good. But... I would be just as happy with offense, if not maybe a bit more happy with offense than armorer. But with that said, the creatures that they're specializing are better than the creatures that the barbarians are specializing in. So I already kind of like them a bit more than the barbarian. Um, let's go through and think about the uh, individuals though. So we've got Alkin, his uh, gimmick is Gorgons and offense, Broghild, Wyverns and scouting, all oak, all solid, right? I mean, wyverns are tier six, but you can get them much earlier than than other tier six creatures. Bron basilisks, basilisks are a good creature. Interference is okay. Knolls, solid, useful. Dracon, thank you. Your leadership is going to be useful to me as well. Gerwolf, yeah, sure. A Christian for the for the um, fortress. Sign me up. Corback, serpent flies are amazing. So are dragonflies. Pathfinding, great. Tazar, armor, armor, armor. Nice one. And then Wiston. A nice narrative of archery and lizard men. Okay, similar to what Carl is doing, similar to, is it the Orin, uh, the knight? It all clicks together. In other words, everyone on this list has similar property to what the dungeon overlord has. Okay. Armourer isn't as amazing as the mixture of leadership, offence and tactics that the overlord has. And there are more creatures, there's, you know, seven of them are, no, six of them, sorry, are creature specialists. So they'll, they'll, that'll wear them down a little bit. The 0411 as well, as I've said, I don't love it as much as 2211. 0411, you know, there are going to be some classes like overlords and knights that say, hey, I can do your job better than you. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think they're moderately good. Seven out of ten. For the second test, will I hire these guys to, to lead my dungeon army? Would I hire them to lead a tower army? Maybe, yeah. I might hire them to lead a stronghold army because I kind of like zero four. Um, I might hire them to lead a cove army, actually. I think that would go nicely. Zero four one one balanced against the really high attack power of the creatures of the cove. You know, so I think these guys are moderately attractive to foreign powers, something like five and a half out of 10. There are no superstars here, but everyone is saying, yeah, I, you know, as a team, what are we saying? Seven out of 10 for test one and a five and a half for test two, Beastmaster. So I think that puts them in here. I think they're up in this region. Somewhere in here. I think they might be better than a wizard. I think they might be better than a ranger. Are they better than a necromancer? Um, yeah, okay, that's it, Beastmasters. So these witches are gonna be needing stitches by the time I'm done with them. A witch has a stat profile of zero, one, two, two. Okay, so zero attack, one defense, and then two each for spell power and knowledge. So, okay. For a hero of magic, acceptable. Uh, we're in cleric territory, or you know, as, as, a, as a sort of starting point. Here's my beef. The fortress, much like the stronghold, which I didn't talk about when I was 
attacking battle mages earlier. The fortress can only get to level 3 mage guild. That's another reason why battle mages suck so bad. Oh, can I just say for a second, basic wisdom going up to expert wisdom, if you're hanging out in the stronghold as a battle mage, that's pointless. The stronghold can only get to level 3 in the first place. Okay. Witches have the same problem. The fortress can only get to level 3. So being having wisdom isn't going to pay divs unless you're really able to go around. You're going to have to go out of your way to teach your spellcaster fancy spells. You're going to have to go find somewhere else to learn Dimension Door because I can't teach it to you. I can't teach you Water Walk or any of the stuff that you're really going to leverage in the late game as a hero of magic. So the town is saying to the witches, I'm not behind you. I'm not going to support you. In the same way that the Stronghold laughs at the idea of wisdom of on any of its starting heroes. Okay? And that's a problem. Right. But... I will say that the 2-2 two, two for spell power and knowledge, it, it's, it's where you want to be as a starting point, okay, for someone who starts with a spell book. Sure. Let's have a look, shall we? Andra, intelligence? Okay, intelligence works. Dispel's a useful spell. Not really in the early game, though. Merist, pretty poor. Stoneskin doesn't matter and learning stinks. Merlander's advanced wisdom won't matter, but weakness is a useful spell. I want to say it won't matter, it, it won't click. Rossic, mysticism and magic arrow... Not worthless, um, but okay. Stig uh, was one of my heroes in the previous thing, but really only not able to leverage her sorcery, really. She is at least all lined up and that she knows sorcery and she's good at sorcery. Again, it would be nice if Shield wasn't her starting spell. You, you need a way to teach her the good spells. Teva, dun dun dun. Go ahead and drop, hop, jump in the trash with Malcolm. Verdish. Pretty poor first aid, just isn't good a good thing, really. And protection from fire. And then Voy navigation. We won't hold it against her. It might be amazing. Often it'll be useless, right? Okay, how likely are we to pick witches to lead our fortress army? I'm not likely at all, right? I'm looking to the Beastmaster instead. I'm saying, dude, can you save me? Because I can't, I can't guarantee that this... Witch's journey is going to be a, uh, a, a, a an arc. I can't guarantee her arc is going to work because I need to find an enemy town, an enemy tower or rampart or dungeon that has a fifth guild mage, uh, fifth level mage guild in it before she can be switched on in the mid game or late game. I can't teach her the things she needs to know, so I'm looking to you instead. You know, how likely am I to pick a foreigner? Yeah, or a beastmaster. I'm just going to pick someone else a lot of the time. So I think these girls are... Are they all girls? Oh, sorry, maybe they're not all girls. Down in the... 2 out of 10 region? For the first test. For the second test, how likely am I to pick a witch from this list to do a job for me? Well, I was going to, I was going to give them a really bad score for that as well, but I actually... You know, you could see yourself taking a witch as the Conflux or the Tower. You could take Stig in, in the Tower. Right? That's actually not bad. That works. Yeah. I think that actually does work. I think they're better at um, helping foreign powers with their spellcasting needs. <laughs> they, you, foreign powers can leverage these, these, these characters. Okay, Melanda works, Andra works, Rossick will work, Stig will work. Okay, the others are all mm, not really. So I think maybe it's four and a half for the second test. Two and a half and four and a half. Which actually means I think that I was gonna put I, I was gonna put them in twentieth. This is the, the which was the class I was thinking of just absolutely putting in the bin because of the Mage Guild level three thing. But now that I'm the more I think about it, the more I realise that the battle mages have that problem as well on top of having 1-1 one, one as their starting spell power and knowledge. So witches are better than these. I think I'm doing this. And I'm giving Merlanda and the witches 18th place over a druid. Well, are they even... Could they hold a candle to the druid? They have... Druids have 1 and 2 instead of 2 and 2 for spell power and knowledge. But there aren't as many bad druids. Well, there's Malcolm, though. Yeah, they've got Melodia, Malcolm, Gem is first aid, and then Coronius, the hilarious Slayer guy. 
All their secondaries are poor, but, 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 here's the thing. In the Rampart, you can get the Rampart to level 5 Mage Guild. You know, and for, for a Wisdom Hero... Uh, you know, so I think it, it, it is close. There are plenty of bad characters in Druid to rival the, t the the bad characters in Witch, but because of that Mage Guild thing, right, if that Druid goes on to be my primary hero, I can get behind them and I can invest in the Mage Guild level 4, level 5. So that's what separates them. So I'm going to still put Witches down in the doldrums. I think they are better than the Heretic with its two spell power and one knowledge. But the Heretic can get to level 5 as well. And there are less morons in the Heretic list as well. Let me just pull up Heretics quickly. Yeah, so the Heretics don't, don't have an Eagle Eye person. Um, everyone is mediocre-ish. Zyron's kind of cool. Olima's alright. Kala gives you Sulphur. Um, so I think Heretics are better than Witches. Yeah, so my gut feeling was witches and battle mages stink because of that mage guild issue. I'm going to stick with that. Okay, I'm going to stick with that. Okay, so here are the planeswalkers. There are eight of them to choose from, and they all specialize in elementals, uh, one of the different various kinds of elementals. Their starting primary stat profile is 3111, so three attack, one defense, and then one each for the uh, magic abilities. I like the, that primary stat profile. Three and one seems good. Sadly, though, I hate all the elementals, except for the psychic ones, psychic and magic elementals, so Monair and Passus. Um, maybe you're okay, but like I said before, tier six, you don't need to buff tier six creatures as a specialty. It's not going to trigger and matter much in the game. There's not many points in the game where it's going to matter. So none of the specialities really end up mattering much to me as a starting point. So I already i am thinking, okay, compared to a knight, my standard poster kind of standard stock hero of might. I don't like them as much as a hero, as a knight already. Let's look at the skill set though. I'm not going to go through each one because they're all kind of interchangeable. We've got tactics, offense, logistics uh, as a one of. Well, they're good, they're good abilities. They're very, very solid abilities. Tactics and offense are, are the reason why I love the overlords, okay? But, uh, and then I love Estates. Estates is, is really, really useful. And um, I hate learning. And Artillery is useless. I don't like Artillery as a starting skill. I like it as a skill, okay, but only if you've got access to a blister or if you've come by one, um, one way or another. So where are we? <sighs> this is tough. Let me downsize here and uh, we'll think about it. How li okay, I haven't applied the test. How likely am I to buy a Planeswalker to lead the Conflux? Okay, this is, this is actually really, really useful logic. How likely am I to choose a Planeswalker? Well, they're up against Elementalists. Okay, they're up against Elementalists, and Elementalists are good. Okay, which we're going to get to in just a moment. That, that actually does make a difference. How the test was, how likely am I to pick them in the Conflux? I love Elementalists, and I'm going to pick Planeswalkers less often as a result. Okay, Wizards and Warlocks love to show up in the Conflux and make, you know, make trouble for the Planeswalker. Okay, you're going to hire Sephenroth or Theod Theodorus, certainly Solmir, certainly Jedite. You're going to hire them over Ignissa here, right, a lot. Okay, I'm going to give them seven and a half. Uh, I'm going to give them seven out of ten. So it might only be six and a half out of ten, actually. Okay, how, how likely would I be to hire one of these in a, as a foreign power when I'm out on my frontier doing things as the dungeon? Yeah, might, pretty, pretty, pretty likely. Uh, great skill set and estates and logistics, all the stuff they've got in there. Yeah, why not? <coughs> six. I don't care about your specialities. But you're you're handy heroes, and you're you're going to do you're going to do good for me. Um, six and a half and six puts them somewhere in this region. I think I think Ignis is going to be fighting with Fiona. Yep, yeah, I'm going to put Fiona above Ignissa. Um, I'm going to put Demoniacs above Planeswalkers. 
but it's close. And again, this is based on my chosen criteria, the two pillars, right? The fact that the conflux has this weird thing going on where elementalists are really strong. Um, Fiona and her friends have to fight against heretics for, a, for, for your attention, and they're going to win that fight. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why, um, even though the secondary skills are solid, the specialities stink, and the competition is very, very hot, which matches the artwork. Moving on then to Elementalists. And this was the class that I was looking forward to, uh, that I was alluding to earlier when I put um, Overlords up on the pedestal. Let's have a look, shall we? The Elementalist stat profile is 0033. So they get six spell po uh, skill points instead of five. For a hero of magic, that's unfair and uh, doesn't uh, happen anywhere else, um, from what I can see in the list anyway. No other hero of magic has five. Uh, sorry, has six. They all have five. Everyone has wisdom. So we're heroes of magic. Three spell points, three sp uh, spell power, three knowledge means we all, without exception, can cast our spells uh, up to... Thir we have 30 spell points to work with on day one. In addition... If you cast your eye to skill 2, every single one of them starts with a school of magic unlocked. And that doesn't mean they know all the spells. It means that they have proficiency. And they're on their way to becoming an air mage or water mage or whatever, whichever one it is. That is generally good because you know that out of your 8 skill slots, you're going to want to fill uh, those 8 with at least 1, but possibly 2 or even 3 different schools of magic. So what I'm saying is that the Elementalists all have a huge candidacy for being your big, primary, amazing hero that you're going to level up all the way to the end because they come ready to rock. They come with everything you need, plus three, plus three to both the skills that matter, and they're already proficient in one of the schools of magic. So they almost out-wizard the wizard, if that makes sense. Let's have a look through, though. Anan, Disrupting Ray isn't a spell that matters or gets cast very often. Briss's haste is okay, okay. CL, her magic arrow is amazing, especially in the early game, does more damage, and she can cast it like six times right out of the gate. So you hire her on day one, and she can run around with no army uh, and just clean up uh, the, the, the area. My friend Matthew um, years ago told me about that exploit uh, game he was playing where uh, she just breaks the game open for you at the, at, at the, in the early game. Gilair and Grindon, I love the gold. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Like, that's just awesome. And then I don't care about Bloodlust, Stoneskin, and as I say, Firewall isn't something I've used as an exploit, but people do speak fondly of. So, in a weird way, the specialities and the spells kind of take a little bit of the shine off, but you've got, pound for pound, every single one of these eight individuals is extremely good, extremely attractive. Let's have a look at the test. How likely am I to hire one of these as the Conflux? Given that I can do the College of Magic, I can t teach them university, Magic University, I can get to level 5, no problem. In terms of Mage Guild, yeah, highly likely. Very, very highly likely. 9 out of 10. I mean, the Wizards and Warlocks are going to fight with you, you know. How likely are you to hire an Elementalist? while you're playing as a foreign faction? Well, circumstantially, very likely. <laughs> like, it could be 10 out of 10 if you have a faction and an environment in which you can teach these uh, heroes some spells. If you can teach any of these people Lightning Bolt, they are going to outclass so many other character classes for your attention. However, if you can't, and you're on the frontier with a stronghold, no mage guild, I need someone. To, I need to hire someone who can go around and get things done and level up and, and invest in and deploy a big army and use it well. Well, these guys are still interesting to you, but probably not, right? You're probably going to go, go with a different class or the domestic class. So I love elementalists. Where should Labitha go? Um, I, I want the elementalists in my top three. Are they better than overlords? Maybe they are. So I need to come back to that question. We need to maybe bring both lists up alongside each other at the end to figure out who deserves first place. Elementalists just as a team are so, so good, so solid. But there is that situational issue that you need to be in magic. 
for them to be of use. If you are, then they're just unbeatable. Two classes to go, both from the Cove Town and the Horn of the Abyss. For those of you not familiar with Horn of the Abyss, it's an amazing expansion to the game uh, that I highly recommend you give a try. And you might still conclude you don't uh, want to play with it, but um, uh, yeah, I, I could, I, I'll, I'll take too long waxing on about how good uh, and how lovingly it's been built. Let's have a look at captains. So a captain is kind of like a barbarian. The profile is 3021. So instead of 4011, they have this weird thing where they've got two spell power and only three attack, but very obviously attack minded. Looking through the list, um, we can see a smattering of offense, similar again to the Barbarian, but also intermingled with leadership and um, tactics, armorer, all of which are really, really nice skills. I love estates there with Lena at the bottom. Miriam's logistics is really nice. Um, so already starting to feel like, yeah, these guys have a say um, alongside the knights and overlords in terms of attractiveness of their secondary skills and their stat list. The two spell power is a bit weird, though. It's a bit weird. Let's have a look at Annabelle. She's good with pirates, and pirates are a great unit in the cove. Kind of think of them like uh, an elf that can only shoot four times. Um, and, yeah, doesn't deal... Doesn't hit as hard as elves, but, but it certainly hits hard. Has very high attack uh, rating. And that attack rating goes nicely with the archery. They also have no melee penalty, so their offense will kind of uh, kick in as well. Cassiopeia um, is a water woman, um, or a nymph, or an oceanid, or whatever she is. Nymphs are the level one creature, and they're not good. Not really. They, they're pretty good. Oh, they're all right. They're kind of like, I think of them as a um, sprite. Not a sprite, a, a pixie. Being an expert at nymphs doesn't doesn't hugely excite me, but offense and tactics are great. Corks is really good at offense, and okay, that's cool. And he has pathfinding, a bit like Craghack. Derek crewmates are a solid level two unit, um, and offense and leadership works with them, so I think Derek's okay. I won't talk too much about Elmore. I won't hold navigation against him. Illor, uh, Stormbirds are a really solid unit. Armor at tactics is good. Jeremy uh, is the Christian. Yeah, except it's a cannon instead of a ballista. Different damage profile um, and different see different characteristics during a siege. Um, offense means he's good. He's a solid hero. Good pick, free cannon. Lena gives you gold and estates, which I love. And then Miriam scouting logistics, solid actually. Right. So I was gonna go kind of negative, but then towards the back end there, I kind of started to perk up a bit. So I think the captain is good. I think the captain is good. How likely are you to choose the captain while playing as the cove? Well, the cove's creatures are all, unlike the stronghold, they are all geared towards attack and less so towards defense already. So when you hire these heroes, you're kind of doubling down on that story with the offense. <laughs> if, you if you take a cove army and lead it with a barbarian, what you've got on your hands is a glass cannon, something that can hit extremely hard when it attacks, but God help you if um, your opponent casts lightning bolt or... Um, you know, has a haste advantage over you or casts expert slow on all your stuff and you start taking hits, right? So I actually ironically don't think captains are as good at helping the cove as overlords are at helping the dungeon or as knights are at helping the castle. I don't think they're quite as good at doing that primary job. They're still very good. So I'm only going to give them 7 out of 10 for that, for that reason. Even though the roster is strong, there's no weaklings on this on this roster, right? Not really. Cassiopeia maybe isn't isn't as strong as the others. Maybe it's seven and a half. How likely are you to pick a captain to lead one of your um, to lead an army and to develop as a foreign faction? Pretty likely, moderately likely, I would say. Uh, similar similar offering to what the um, overlords and knights are saying, except pirates, nymphs, crewmates, stormbirds. Um, yeah. I think they're okay. Um, they're going to get picked 3021 instead of 2211. Is a tad awkward, so a little bit of the shine comes off in their appeal. So I think this this class is behind the knight. Um, I think it's behind the knight, but it's still very good. 
I think I like alchemists more than this. Do I like them more than the Beastmaster? I think them, I, I do like them a bit more than the Beastmaster. Uh, so, Jeremy, I'm, he wants to get onto the podium. He wants to get onto the podium, but he's up against Thant and Ashlyn and the other necromancers that... So, he doesn't quite make the podium, the second podium, but I think he's better than a Beastmaster, so I'm going to rejig things here. Okay. So that's just the edit made. Uh, that's a really solid score, seventh place. It's it's not easy to get to get in the top half when you're up against, you know, the, the other classes we've talked about. Okay, and here are our eight navigators, heroes of magic of the Cove Persuasion, and no one else has this stat profile. We've got a weird one here, two zero one two. Well, if I'm starting off as a hero in the game at level one pretty much anywhere in the game, the stats I value the most highly are either attack or knowledge. So I kind of like 2012. It, it's like, yeah, you're a hybrid. You, you're a hero of a hero of both. But you're an effective hero of both. This is what the battle mage needed to be. It's what the witch needed to be as well. Um, it's certainly what the heretic needed to be. 2012. Much, much better than the stat profiles of these three uh, and the druid and stuff. So... Let's have a look at what we've got. Now, the Cove can get to level 4. It's Mage Guild, the same as the, as the Castles. Can't quite get to level 5, but level 4 is still okay. So we've all got Wisdom, and we're starting in a town. Uh, we're often starting or working for a town that can get to level 4. I'm not going to hold that too badly against them. Um, okay, so Andal, Crystal uh, Provider, and Pathfinding, and he knows Slow. Great, I love Free Crystal. So good, good handy hero. Astra. Cure and Luck, meh. Casimetra, Sea Witches are a ranged unit that act, I like to think of them as like liches, except instead of Death Cloud, they cast a spell after they attack you. Quite a nuisance to fight against and quite powerful. So being a specialist in them, eh, yeah, I suppose it's okay. She already knows water magic, like an elementalist, so that's good. So yeah, Casimetra ends up being pretty, Casimetra is her name. Ends up being pretty strong, I think. Dargam's air shield might be good, but I doubt it. I, I don't use air shield very much. His tactics are nice. Eo Vasius was my mortal enemy in the last campaign, and he was a pain in the butt. His clone, he gets two clones instead of one, and he can do it right from the beginning, and he has intelligence to get the extra spell points. He needs to be able to do it as much as he wants. You can tell that the designers of Hero Horn of the Abyss have thought carefully about hero uh, comp composition about the composition of abilities inside each of the specific heroes. And so Eo Vasius is strong. He's a good, good hero. Manfred's fireball and fire magic. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know, I guess, is he a genie? Um, by descent. Uh, at least he's telling his story. It's like, I like casting fireball, and I am a fire mage. Cool, okay. Spint is good at casting damage spells, except he starts with bless. And then Zilair is good at forgetfulness. His forgetfulness lasts longer than everyone else's, which doesn't matter. Um, okay, how do we feel? If I'm in the cove, how likely am I to pick one of these guys, or girls or guys, to lead my army to greatness and to level up and invest in this hero? Fairly likely. They're a good class. You get 20 spell points to start with, t plus two attack for your army. It is a hybrid class. But it's one that you can take in whichever direction you want. They will struggle a little bit for a balanced, you know, like because they're a hybrid, as they level up, their primary stats, whichever one you've picked, won't necessarily be the one you get as, as, as they level up. You could end up with a spellcaster with really high attack that doesn't quite click as well as someone with high spell power would. Um, but you can't hold that against, like they've really made a, a legitimate effort to create a genuine hybrid class where the Battle Mage and Heretic really fail uh, to, to, to do so. So I like the Navigator. I'm going to choose it over others, not as much as a Captain, but I will choose Navigators, these Navigators, over Foreigners fairly fairly frequently, probably 6 out of 10. Um, how likely am I to pick a Navigator to do something for me out in the world as a foreign power? Fairly likely. They're good heroes. Just because they're good. They have a lot going for them. Two attack, two knowledge, I get crystal, or I can I can do good clone or sorcery. So yeah, I'm going to say six out of ten for both, both tests. 
Okay, so Kazmetra, six and six, probably belongs somewhere in this region here. I think they're better than a cleric. I think they're... Ignissa, they're, these guys are strong, but they have this weird thing where they're up against elementalists. As I said earlier, I won't wax on about it again. Are they better than a demoniac? Maybe a bit better? Okay, I think they're better than uh, demoniacs. So, we have a candidate list. Um, kind of ready to uh, send off and seal up and, and, and finish up, finish off. Having said that, there's a couple I just want to check. There's one main fight that I want to have before I sign off for first place. I think I'm not going to have individual fights for 10th versus 11th, stuff like that. You could easily argue that, oh, navigators belong up here and rangers should come down a few squares. This middle section here, it's hard to discriminate between them. I think I'm happy with the second podium. It's really between the overlords and the elementalists uh, where I want to do a little bit more analysis before we conclude. Okay, so it's a showdown for first place between the overlords and elementalists. How are we going to split them here? The key thing is that both lists are really solid from top to bottom. Slight asterisks in that the overlord has sinker, which, and she sucks. Maybe the first fist that's thrown, the first point goes to the elementalist just because sinker, on the tug of war, if there's a rope between, there's eight people on each side, sinker is there going, oh, and complaining and not doing, not, not working hard enough. How amazing is it to come with a school of fire magic, a school of magic, over another, over different, over a different casting? How amazing is it to have three spell power and three knowledge compared to another magic class? Is it really as amazing as I said? It's pretty good, and they all do it. On the other hand, with the overlords. Like, is there ever, is there ever an enemy faction, or sorry, a rival foreign faction that says no to those seven? You might say, yeah, I say no to Ajit. I don't need, I don't need interference. Right. You know, and we say, like, okay, foreign factions don't want beholders, minotaurs, harpies, troglodyte specialities either. Having said that, with the elementalists, foreign powers don't always want a spellcaster. They want someone who can actually get the job done with two, two, one, one, and a bunch of useful skills. Because I don't have a, I can't teach you lightning bolt. I don't have time to, for you to learn lightning bolt. So I think what this boils down to is, elementalists are better than overlords as late game mega stars. Late game absolute mega unbeatable mega stars that can teleport around the map. They're town portling or if you've got that spell switched on, I, ha I have a habit of turning it off at the moment. But they just dominate, and on the battlefield, implosion, chain lightning, I don't need an army. I am become the very essence of earth or fire or air, right? Amazing level 20 characters. For me, though, I think overlords win the early game uh, appeal factor. More so in the dungeon and as uh, as an option for a foreign power early in the game. Okay, I'm ready to make a decision. Because the elementalist does carry a degree of, of situational uh, factor at different parts of the game, early in the game, as the conflux, sure, they're insane. I've got, like, yeah, I'm, because I plan on leveling you up to level 20. I'm, yeah, I want you as an elementalist, sure. But across all the other scenarios, late in the game as the conflux, Early in the game as someone else, let's say, pick, pick the Inferno. Late in the game is the Inferno. They are amazing if you can teach them spells. Okay, Overlords are just amazing all the time. Or they're really, really, they're at least really, really solid all the time. Whether you're in the dungeon, a high spellcasting environment, a, high, a highly magical environment, or not. But for that situational factor, I'm just going to very slightly tip the scale to the Overlord. I'm going to call it there. And so the final fight has been fought and the winner has been decided. Bronze goes to the Death Knight. Silver goes to the Elementalists. Extremely close second to our prize winner, the Overlord, down in the dungeon. First place, best class in the game. Worst class in the game is the Battle Mage. And that's it.